Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Dhamma meeting where we will discuss the Buddhist practices of charity, morality, and meditation. Everyone who is interested is welcome to join. We are waiting for our first participant. Who shall that be? The night seemed like a little bit slow. It took a while for me to get into the room. It's Maybe it's the speed, the uh, internet speed is slow or something. Got 19 people waiting. We cannot okay. let them in. Okay, I got first. Marco first. Hello, Marco. You're the first one. Here. Did you have difficulty getting in, or you have to wait longer than usual? Hi, Tana Jan. No, it was okay. Uh, I always log in early, so it was okay this time. Okay. Go ahead and say anything you like to say. Um, I have I have a couple of questions. Uh, my first question is Tana Jan. I've noticed that I'm getting more irritated when I when I realize that somebody's not understanding what I'm trying to say. Um, and I, I, I would like to say, get some guidance as to how to deal with that. So I try to be mindful. I try to be patient. And when it feels like the, the person who I'm talking to is not understanding it, I do sense that I'm, I'm getting irritated and I, I do show that apparently in my, in my behavior, uh, how can I, how can I remedy that? Well, first of all, your cost of the cost of your irritation is because you want the person to understand what you're talking about. But you have to look at the person and analyze. He may not understand what you're talking about, or his mind is somewhere else when you when you're talking to him. So this thing can happen. So, like I say, don't expect anything from anybody. Yes, yes, okay, repeat the question or repeat what you have to say. And maybe he's not listening. Or maybe he's, he's here, but his mind is somewhere else. You know, so no, no point getting irritated because it doesn't do anything doesn't any good anyway. anyway. Just, just, just look at the person and say, you know, he's the nicha, he's not someone you you think he is all the time he might be some somebody today not the same person you know yesterday and you just cannot control him thank you Tanajan. yeah i i i've noticed that that i'm i'm doing that i'm also feeling that i'm getting more agitated about other things so so i i don't like going out in public much um in the past i had the problem that i was too focused on the outside i was scanning constantly looking people in the face and i've completely stopped doing that but then doing that i i, I try to, to look at my feet when i'm walking outside but i start to feel agitated by being outside is it possible that that's the killers is trying to to Yes, when, when you feel irritated, it's because you expected something else and you're not getting what you expected. Could be anything, could be people, it could be the weather, it could be anything. So you just have to practice a lot more mindfulness and meditation to have more equanimity to deal with the changing situation. A changing situation in Anicca, see? Anicca mean change. Things keep changing and you cannot control them. That's anatta. You get irritated because you think you, you can change them or you can control them and make them 
the way you want them to be. Yeah, I think indeed that's the case. I, I think I even try to control myself that I don't want to feel like that. And, and that doesn't work. That doesn't that doesn't work that way because then you feel tense. Same way you cannot control your mind you know. all the time. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can. Same way with sensation or feeling. Sometimes you can control them, sometimes you cannot. So when you cannot control them, just try to flow with it. Blowing in the wind, as they call it, you know. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what, what, one of the things that I've agreed with my wife is that I was going to share with her what, what some of the thoughts are that, that come up. And, and we always get into arguments about it because for me, it the mind goes so fast. There's so many things that come up all the time. And I don't... I try not to hold on to them specifically when they're not not okay things where I'm trying to to compose myself or to control myself or control the mind, which doesn't always work. Do you have suggestions for me on that? Because I don't want to disappoint her. Uh, and at the same time, I don't want to lose track of what I'm trying to achieve, which is just understanding what's happening and letting the mind be the mind, but at the same time, not go in the wrong direction to, to do skillful actions constantly. I've been keeping the precepts really well and I feel really good about it. Weekly now I'm doing two days, eight precepts and I'm I'm thinking about doing it longer because I feel more sharp when I'm doing my, my meditation, especially in the evening. And, but yeah, I, I feel that, that sometimes the communication about what's happening is, is, is difficult. Do you have tips on that maybe? Well, you have to know your limitation. Don't be a perfectionist. <laughs> Sometimes you fail, sometimes you 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 succeed. Things are like that in life. So accept your failure sometimes because you know sometimes beyond your ability to do whatever you set up to do. But one thing you can do is not not giving up. Just keep trying. But, That's the key. But be ready to, to fail, and then you won't feel disappointed or sad or angry at yourself. If you think that you have to succeed all the time, then when you fail, you feel terrible. That's true. Yeah, I feel really good about doing the practice now very strongly, and I fall back on that. Uh, but I'm not saying I, I have very little people to to talk to. I have this this forum, at least, to to share my, my feelings and Sometimes when I get into a bout with my wife and she she ignores me, it drives me absolutely nuts because she's the only one I can talk to about about this stuff. So I'm trying to be stronger in that as well and not trying to control or expect. But it's difficult because I want to share. I want to I want to share what I'm feeling. And at the same time, then I get ed agitated when I have a feeling I'm not being understood, which doesn't help either. So I'm in this circle which I create myself. And I know that that's something that that I need to train more more mindfulness on that and be more willing to to let go of what I'm expecting or controlling. That's difficult. Yes, reduce your want. And the more you want, the more likely you will become disappointed. So just try to take things as they come. Do what you can, do your best, and that's all you can do. And whatever happens, it happens, you know. Be ready to accept either succeed, success or failure. Life is like yeah. that. It's two sides to the, of the same coin. Absolutely. Success and failure is the same It's just two sides of the same coin. Both True. sides now. Both sides now. You have to look at life at both sides now. That's true. One of the other, other things that I've been noticing is that that and sometimes I have the feeling that I get doubt when I'm uh, trying to um, to meditate. And what I mean with doubt is, so I'm focusing on the breath and then I'm, I'm noticing that my body is feeling good, it's, it's getting tingling. And then I realize that, but I focus back on the, on the breathing. And then I'm wondering, am I focusing too hard on the breathing uh, or am I? And, and I wonder what, what can I do to get the doubt away? Because I think the doubt is, is, is holding me back. Well, just look at the reality on the ground, what's going on on the ground. Just look at your breath and know, what, know it for what it is. 
So I'm mm-hmm. grasping too much or imagining too much, and then it becomes thinking again, and then that takes me away from from the practice, basically. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of the things that I've I've been struggling with in the beginning that I've been thinking too much, um, and that's been going better, I think, because I I, I feel more calm now, but I also feel more when I'm just trying to be mindful whenever I'm doing anything like walking towards uh, the coffee room or, or going to the car, I, I noticed that there's really a whirlpool of, of things happening constantly, which is very tiring. I don't think that that's ever going to get better. Yes, but you don't have to pay attention to them, really pay attention to what you do. Yeah. And, and that's the, the key, I think. So, so, I, I before I think before I did the practice so intensely, I, I didn't even notice there were so many things happening. And I think this awareness of, of them happening actually sparks interest somehow, or at least it, it amazes me as how many how many thoughts are happening at the same time. And at the same time, then I'm trying to be mindful to go back to the walking, for instance, taking steps. But it's interesting to to see is that yeah, I, I'm wondering if it's because I'm now so focused on on practicing. I think you you think too much. Well, just just forget about it. You, just just look at what's going on. That's all. You don't try to analyze them or anything like that. You don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is a key uh, a key uh, how do you call it topic that comes back for me every week. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, Ajahn. Um yeah so that that's that that was the the main thing that I wanted to ask about uh, also the um, walking meditation on the steps that I'm taking one of the things that uh, also to stop the thinking is actually not to 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 say any th- any words in my mind but just feeling the steps so I feel my foot going up my foot coming down instead of actually saying the words because I have a feeling that when I'm starting to say the words that a dialogue starts up easier or faster? Is that a good approach to just observe the feeling as opposed to words in the mind? It's not the feeling you want to observe. You want to watch your steps. Watch the step what, itself. Yeah, watch what's going on. When you're walking towards something or not, is there a snake ahead of you or something like that? You know, so, just so pay attention no. to to the body and the surrounding that on on the the thing that's ahead of the of the the path that the body is going toward. Just be careful. That's what <laughs> mindfulness is being be careful. Make sure that you don't slip or fall or run walk into a tree or something, you know. So so I'm I'm basically then narrating what I'm doing in my mind. That's the problem. So I should stop narrating. I should just yeah, take take the right. steps. That's, mm. that's the goal is to stop narrating, stop dialogue, mental dialogue. Yeah. I think that that's what I'm trying to say indeed with the words that I mean. So not to use words indeed, but just to observe the steps happening and then yeah, not just saying to the words. Know, just to know, to observe, to see what's going on with your body action. Yeah. Thank you, Tanajan. I think there's a word they call bare awareness. I think that they use the word bare awareness. Bare awareness. Okay. Yeah. Just to be aware. Yeah. Merely being aware, but no no thoughts. No no thought about what you are what you are seeing or, <laughs> or observing. Just just being aware. Just observe. Be a silent observer. It's the silent bit is key. <laughs> Thank you, Tanajan. Okay. Don't try to analyze too much. Yeah. If you want I to analyze, try. analyze the, the the body, such as is it anija or is it uh, is it permanent or is it not permanent? Is is there a self in this body or is there not a self? This yeah, is if you want to analyze. I think this is something you 
we should analyze. <laughs> and when I do that, I get I get I get very interesting discussions in my head, which is exactly not the mindfulness that I then need, mm -hmm. which is different. That's actually that's one of the reasons why I think I got into trouble in the beginning because I was trying to observe my body, but then in such a way like oh this is this and this is now this and this now this, and then I'm not relating it to the this is not me. And then again, it becomes this thought process where you have this dialogue happening, which I'm now trying to steer away of. And it's indeed going better by not going into that dialogue, but just trying to do the observation of that. So then after I do my meditation, and I'm, I'm more calm. Then I do that analysis. Then I do my Asupa training and I try to see the body for what it is. And that's helping because I'm, I've been seeing now constantly when I'm walking, even just images of the of the asupa things that i'm seeing to try to apply that to 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 the body to my own body as well when i see the skin i see it decaying i see i see that it's dirty i see that it's it's just not not beautiful at all it's changing constantly so i'm seeing that now which is good but then indeed the thoughts come up again as well yes basically it is your, your mind about the, the about the body the nature of the body Will we get old or not get old? Will we get sick or not get sick? Will we die or not die? <laughs> Just these yeah. three questions. Just try to find an answer and be ready to to you know to face it when the the, the answer when the time comes. Exactly. <laughs> That's more important than anything else that you should know. The Buddha constantly teaches us to remind ourselves that we are subjected to aging, sickness, and death. It's a natural process that we cannot go beyond. Yes. So try to teach our mind until eventually it will accept the, this truth. Then when it happens, the mind will not feel any, any suffering, any stress. Thank you, Paja. Okay. All right, next we'll go to Oregon to step. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, I listened to a talk you did, um, I think it was like seven years ago, um, and you said in your response, the defilements, um, I, I don't know if I'm getting this wrong, um, the defilements stay with us, um, in our rebirths, is that true? Yes, yes. Go, so that's the defilement is in the mind, not in the body. So, so that's what goes on. So that's yeah. why we want to deal with our defilements. That's right, because okay. our defilement are the one that causing us the stress, the suffering, the the pain in the mind. Okay. Yeah. Basically, they the they the cravings, cravings for sensual pleasure. Okay, so our cravings Stay that I mind. feel Come like in the day mind. to day, yeah. that is also, that's just like kind of like part of this. And then that's going to go on into the next because that's kind of how this is. So it'll go into the next, even Unless, if it's not me specifically. And that's and why I want to deal with it now. Yes, if you can eventually somehow get rid of it, then it won't, then it won't be in, left in your mind. And then I, easier chance in the bana, yeah. And basically, the way to get rid of it is not to to follow it, not to go after the cravings. And you have to use meditation and mindfulness and wisdom to be able to to resist these cravings. And eventually, the cravings will no longer be in your mind. I have that with some, but not all. <laughs> yeah. Next time, just try to get rid of some of the craving that you can. Ask yourself, is it necessary that I have to do this thing or not? Whether I have to watch this movie or not? Whether I have to eat that this thing helpful. or not? That is helpful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you very that. much. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. Next, Alvin from Malaysia. Maskara Tanajan, I don't have any question, just listening in. Thank you, Tanajan. Okay. Professor Ken from Switzerland. Afternoon, Tanajan. 
no questions at the moment, just listening. So there's your day off from teaching? Yeah, this semester it's quite a low, low time. I like teaching on Monday and Friday, so I've got plenty of time. Okay, good. And they have time to practice. Yeah. All right. I'll go to Singapore and then to Cook Sang. Thank you, Tana Chan. Cook Sang, your turn. Yeah, good evening, uh, Prajan. Uh, Prajan just have this question that arises in me, and uh, that is um, what, what should be a, the correct un understanding that we should have uh, regarding the recent escalation of the conflict uh, of war in the Middle East uh, so that we do not feel any stress. Yeah, thank you, Prajan. <laughs> The Buddha said that hatred doesn't uh, doesn't uh, eliminate hatred. It's only goodwill or loving kindness that will eliminate hatred. So if people use hatred to 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 react to one another, they will just continue on with this uh, this cycle of hatred. So this is. Basically, they, they don't understand the nature of, 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 of us, of human being, of the mind, that the mind will react to the same thing that is being treated to, right? If you treat the mind with, somebody treat you with hatred, you naturally would like to hate back. And if somebody treat you with love or, or kindness, you want to ret return the same thing. But people don't believe in this. They think that if you uh, if you react with kindness and love, they'll take advantage of you and 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 hurt you more with hatred more. But I think the Buddha had proven that you know it's not that if you eventually can convince them that you're truly kind and loving, they will stop. You know, they will stop hating you. But this is diff difficult because hatred is the one of the the defilements that's been embedded in the mind for for many lifetimes, and it it, it is the one is the cause of all our conflict in the world is hatred. So it will go on. You know, this look at this thing as normal. This is part of the 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 way of things, the way things are in the world. There will be war, there'll be fighting, there will be killing. And they'll come back and start restart the same thing again. Those people who die this lifetime, they'll come back as whenever they come back as a human, they'll continue on with their hatred. So don't don't expect anything from the world to be rosy and good, you know. Just try to to keep yourself away from from this this fighting or war or whatever if you can. Practice the Buddha said practice the four Brahma Vihara, the four the four abodes of the of the sublime abode, they call it. Loving kindness, metta, karuna, compassion, uh, mudita, sympathetic joy, and equanimity, ubeka. This is how we should treat each other, how we should deal with each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Brother John. You're welcome. Next, Julia from Colorado. Hi, Julia. Hi, How are you doing? Fine. How is it there? Uh, it's raining, rain, rainy. Rain. Uh, raining almost every day now, every afternoon. For the past three or four days, it's been raining. Oh, my God. But it's good. It's cool. It's, it's yeah. The rain makes it the weather cool. 
and fresh makes the air fresh or so you clean up oh. all the pollution in the in the sky oh, that sounds pleasant mm -hmm. so different than here um, so um my my question what is the sign of the beautiful? Because I was learning in um, my poly class um, about uh, in in the in a commentary, it says that um, it it seemed like it was saying that the 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 sign or the the nimitta of of the beautiful can be beauty itself, but the sign can also be the arom, the aromana, which is beautiful. And I wasn't sure, I like to understand directly. Um, so I was wondering more about, you know, sometimes it says, don't pay attention to the sign. So what does the sign of of beauty or the beautiful sign mean? And how to work with that? Well, if you want to use wisdom, you you treat everything as the nija, dukkha, anatta. They rise and cease, they come and go. And you cannot control them. If you become attached to them or reacting to them with love or hate or fear, then you get dukkha, you get suffering. So it's best just to treat them like, like, like something like a natural phenomenon, anatta I means natural phenomenon, like the weather, like, like the what you call thunder or lightning. They come and go. <laughs> you couldn't do anything about them. So just, so just be, be aware. Be, Acknowledge them and then then let go. Don't don't cling to them. Forget about them. That's what I'm saying. You haven't forgotten about them. You see, you become curious toward them. This can cost you dukkha now because the dukkha is trying to find an answer to this this curiosity. Because you don't have the wisdom to see that it's just like it's just a natural phenomenon that comes and go. Yeah, curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. So treat, look at everything as phenomena. Your body and my body is a phenomena. It comes and goes. One day it will disappear from the, the surface of the earth. Something comes and go very quickly. Something comes and go very slowly. But they all comes and go. And you cannot control them. You cannot stop this process. When you cling to them, you you can get dukkha, suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so forget about all these nimittas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 That point is well taken. Now I will, I will try to remember. Mm. Now I'm just imagining fresh rain. It's interesting here in Colorado. Um, it feels like being inside of a hair dryer right now. It's it's hot it's ahead, man. Completely you know dry and warm. Yeah, you got it. Feels electric. I know this is the weather, and you have to just accept it. Yeah. It will come and go. Soon it will turn into winter again. The snow will come in again. You know. Yeah. yeah. Things keep changing all the time. And they're not under your control. So just try to ride along with them, you know. Yeah. Enjoy okay. the ride, enjoy the ride. <laughs> Ajahn's quoting three songs already this morning from... <laughs> <laughs> you know all the songs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the familiarity with the English and the idioms and music is, is pretty amazing, Ajahn. Wow, we're we're lucky that um, to have this opportunity. Um, yeah, Anu Anu Modam. Okay. 
Okay, just just treat everything as illusion, really. There's not no no reality. Whatever appears, it will disappear. They're like a mirage. They seem to be real, but when you get to them, they they're gone. Yeah. Can you hold on to anything permanently? No, nothing is permanent. Everything comes and go. Appear and then disappear. Some appear and disappear slowly, and some appear and disappear very quickly. But they all have the same nature. They are temporary. They are nija. So you cannot treat them as real. Because what is real today can be gone tomorrow, right? So treat them all as illusion. They're not real. They're just like movies that you watch. You watch one movie and when you finish, it's gone. See? And you watch a new movie. So try not to cling to anything because when you lose what you cling, then you become sad or become stressful. So you have to constantly remind yourself that everything is temporary. Everything that you see or you feel or touch, they're all temporary. Even your body is temporary. But the mind is permanent. See, that's the, the one who knows, the one who, who, who come into contact with everything is permanent. But everything that the mind comes into contact with is temporary. Okay, is that clear to you now? Yes. What is best for the mind is emptiness. Because emptiness ne never changes. Emptiness will always remain empty. So you want to get the mind to that, that state where, the, where it can enjoy the, the peace and happiness of being with emptiness. You know, to get to that state of emptiness in the mind, you have to stop all your cravings. You know? Your craving is the one that is pulling your mind away from it, being empty because once you have craving, you feel that you have you got to have something to make you happy. You don't know that actually what what really makes you happy is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, my emptiness. This is what makes the mind peaceful and contented. That's refreshing. So you have to stop your craving. Stop going after. Uh, go. Stop going after things, because everything that you go after turn into suffering sooner or later. Does Atan know the the expression, the term FOMO? It, my friend taught me it means fear of missing out. So like curious about things that one might miss. And my friend thinks that it's possible to have spiritual FOMO, fear of missing out on spirituality or things, exploring. So... So I hope I hope I don't succumb to that. <laughs> mm. I hope none of us do. Yes, you have to meditate to get to equanimity. Then all this love, fear, hatred, and delusion will temporarily stop functioning. And your mind will be remain in contentment with, with nothing, be, be happy with nothing. Okay, Ajahn, that's good. Okay, so the key is mindfulness, because the mindfulness will then give you success in your meditation to get the mind to equanimity, to emptiness. Then you see that emptiness is not so bad at all. 
because emptiness never hurt you. you know? It's all the things that you have that, that keeps hurting you. <laughs> but you still cling to them. You still like them, even though they hurt you. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you. Okay. Next, uh, Philip from Malaysia. Yeah, Tanjan, uh, don't have any questions. Uh, happy to be listening in. Okay. Ninning from Indonesia. Yeah, Ajan. Good evening, Ajan. Ajan, I have a question. Do we always have to keep our promises? For example, I have already promised to my friend to give donation for his project. Before, I know him as a kind person, a good person. But then in the process, I I see him breaking the precept many times, many, many times, even not having direct relation with me. So should I continue donating or just cancel my promise? Well, it depends on how what condition you put on your promise. Eh? You're going to help him until you find out he's bad, then you, you don't want to help him anymore or not. It depends on the condition you set up when you make the promise. If you have no condition, you just, say you just want to, to help him, then it can be interpreted whether... I don't know how, you, how you're going to interpret it. As to, is that permanent promise that you're going to keep helping him all the time? Or not, I don't know. It, 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 it depends on how you make the, your promise. I don't have any condition, but uh, I promise to help him financially in uh, in some building some some something for 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 him. But lately, I see him not as a good person. He many times break breaking the precept. But you didn't you didn't tell him that uh, I'll stop when you when I find out that you're a bad person. Can I tell him like that? Well, you, you when you make the promise, you didn't you, you didn't tell him that when you make the promise, did you? Uh when uh when I make a promise, I I said that oh you are a good person, you are a kind person, I will help you. Okay. That's the condition only like that. So it means that you you will help him if he continues to be a good person. Mm. And so, when, he, when he's no longer a good person, then you can stop helping him. So is it okay uh, in the Dharma? Be uh, because uh, many, many, many people believe that promise should be fulfilled. That's right. Once you make a promise, then you should fulfill it. But it depends on the condition of your promise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people can say, some people promise me that they will, that they will come to the They'll, they'll give food every every once a week once and okay and then they 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 have to keep doing that or if they say they're gonna give food for only three months then these are the conditions you have to to make the Buddha say when he sat under the Bodhi, Bodhi tree he said he's gonna sit there until he became enlightened if he's not enlightened he won't get up from that tree so mm -hmm. there are there are conditions that you have to set up with your promise. Mm, yeah, I see. Then you know. Then you then you can know whether you can 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 keep your promise or not keeping your promise. If the condition change, for instance. Yeah. That's why you, you can promise me that you'll support me as long as I'm among me. But when I'm no longer among, then you don't need to support me anymore. <laughs> yeah. I see. Okay, so it's up to how you how you made your promise. Yeah. And then like uh, a fr uh, like a uh, friendship, sometimes when our close friend become not good person, for example, uh, he make living with uh, having a ship. To collect the fees 
it it means that uh, breaking the first precept. So, uh, should I still be friend with with them or not? Well, see, being friend and being friendly is different. See, you can still be friendly, but you might not want to keep him as a friend anymore. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's why. Uh, that's why I, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not feel convenient anymore. And then I ask myself, is it good if I I stay away from from this friendship and just still be friendly, but but not make a good friendship like before. That's right. You can still, you should still maintain meta toward all beings, regardless of whether they're good or bad. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you should not hate anybody, even if they're bad. It's... Because lately, uh, many people become become not good person because of the condition and the and the crisis. That's because you never thought of Anicca. The Buddha said everything is Anicca. Yeah. Achan said that everything is harmful for, for, uh, for the mind. And that's that's true. Okay. So you have, okay. To, you have to be smart and try not to cling to anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Achan... Um, I, I I still haven't booked my ticket and after I issued my ticket I will I will inf info the admin. Okay. The time. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Achan. You're welcome. Next gig, Yen So from Penang. Achan, a no question or reasoning. Yeah. Okay. Go to California. Nita. Why is Saket is not here today? Uh, good evening, Ajahn. Saket is traveling to India to take care of his mom. I see. Uh, so that is why I'm, um, I'm alone today here. <laughs> um, but you're better that way, I'm being alone. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy the solitude when I get up in the morning. I enjoy the solitude. By the evening, I'm like, I'm feeling lonely. I want him <laughs> back. <laughs> 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 so I'm I'm observing every day the cycle is this way. Like in the morning it's fine. By the yeah. by the day progresses, it, it try gets to, harder. Try to meditate in the evening. Eventually <laughs> you can re replace meditation, replace it with your meditation. <laughs> yes, so John, I I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I do talk to him and uh, on the phone. <laughs> so <laughs> It's interesting to observe these emotions. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Rajan, I wanted to talk about, like, I do these walking. Uh, I, I go for walks uh, frequently these days. And when I'm walking, I like whichever path I take, I know that there are ants all around. I try to be mindful when I'm walking and I, I make sure that I don't step on them when I'm walking. But uh, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know there'll be ants all around, but I'm still walking in this path. Would that be like right intention or should I, what, what should I do in that case? Well, see, the precept of killing means that you have to have the intention, actually wanting to kill those ants. But if you have no intention, and it's a necessity that you have to walk, you have to walk and you might have to step on them. And it's just not considered to be breaking the precept. Okay, okay. So it is okay to walk and I'll definitely try, always try to be mindful of not stepping on them. So that, that would be fine. Yes, as much as you can. But sometimes they're, they're so small and you might not be able to see them, and you might step on them. Mm -hmm. But this okay. is not breaking the. This is not considered to be breaking the precept. Okay. Okay. Good to know that. Um. Thank you, John. Um. Also, when I'm doing walking meditation, um, I was wondering, like, 
if you can please guide me a little on how should I do walking meditation? Like some people take steps very slowly, but I'm not able to do that. Oh, the steps um, can, it's up to you. You can walk fast or slow. Mm -hmm. You can choose the step, the, the pace that you're walking. What's important is to attach your mind to the to the body, to the, to the what's going on with the body. Mm. Just stay with the body, walking with the body. Don't send your mind to India right now, talking to me, for instance. <laughs> yeah. You might be here talking to me, but at the same time, your mind might be wondering what's going on in India right now. <laughs> so you should, should bring the mind to the present. Try to stay away from the past and the future or the distance. Bring it here and now. Keep it staying here now. And you need something to bring it here and now, which is your body. So you just keep focusing on what your body is doing. That's all. Not just walking. When you're mm -hmm. eating, when you're driving, when you're taking a shower, when you're dressing, whenever mm -hmm. you do anything with your body, just stay with the body. That's mm -hmm. the purpose of mindfulness. To prevent your mind from running all over the place. You want to fix the mind in one place, in the present. And stop thinking. When you focus on the body, if you truly focus on your body, you cannot think about other things. If you think, it means you're not focusing on your body already. Okay, that's the goal. The goal is to focus in the, on the body so that you can stop thinking about other, other things. Mm -hmm. Then if you can do this, when you meditate, your mind can become still very fast, very easily. Yeah. Um. Lot of the times when I when I am just done with my work, I feel like I should I should do walking meditation, but at the same time I feel like I want to listen to a dhamma talk. Uh, so I listen to a dhamma talk and then I walk. Um, is like I was thinking what, how I should balance how much should I listen to a dhamma talk and how much should I meditate in a day after work, especially. Um, uh, it depends on which is more beneficial to you. If you find listening to Dhamma talk more beneficial than walking, then do more, more listening to Dhamma talk. But you find that walking is more beneficial for your mind, then you mm -hmm. do more walking. Mm -hmm. There's no fixed rule how many hours you should do each. You know, sometimes find, some people find sitting more beneficial than walking, so they do more sitting than walking. And mm -hmm. they might... They might not. They might listening to dhamma talk. Not 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 much because they they don't need the dhamma talk anymore. They find that they can go on without the dhamma talk, practice without the dhamma talk. But for for beginners, they might find it difficult to practice yet. So they have to rely on listening to dhamma talk to help them start their meditation practice. So it's, it, there's no fixed rule actually. You just have to play by ear. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I also wanted to uh, report back. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy about it that um, I've been following eight precepts since last Wednesday. Um, and your guidance helped when you said that if, if there's hunger, it's the defilement in the mind and not in the body. And in your book, you had mentioned that mind is like the mother and the body is like the child. The child, the mother keeps thinking that the child has to eat food, but the child is not really hungry. So all these talks have really helped me and I've been able to benefit and try eight precepts. Um, and for the past one week, I've been able to do that. Um, yes, whilst, yeah. good. If you find Dhamma talk is helpful to your practice, then you can listen to Dhamma talk. You know, until one day you might feel that you know everything already huh? as far as practice is concerned. Then you might not need to listen to Dhamma talk as much as before. Right. When you're first starting, you might need to listen, to study more than, than, than practice because you have to know how to practice correctly. Good. 
good, good to hear that you 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 find the talks useful to you, and can can help you start your practice. Yes, thank you so much, Rajan, for all your guidance. Okay, I'm happy to do that. Okay, is that all? Yes. yes. All thank right. You. I'll go to London, to England, somewhere near London. Rohini. Good evening, Ajahn. Yes. How are yes. you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, I don't have any questions for now. I just want to pay my respect to you. Um, you, you still keep, keep practicing your mindfulness? Yes, yes. Um, listening to your Dhamma talk and the reading Dhamma books really helped me to, uh, the way I look at things and, and this helped me to um, have a peace of mind and meditate better. It's really changed my life, so I'm really thankful. Do you still recite the four foundation of mindfulness? Yeah, yeah. The last week, uh, um, the week before, I did better. And last week, uh, I was spending more on meditation. Uh, I could not memorize. I wanted to do the next stage, but I could not do it because uh, I was uh, spending more time on um, meditation, sitting and uh, so I, I practice anapana, but not the. Uh, yes, if you can practice yeah, the rest, anapana, not, not then, the rest. I, then, the then you don't need to. Much. Okay, you don't need to recite. Okay. If you can use anapana sati. Yeah, that's that, that's I can I remember that one. that one I memorized, but the um, I could not do much. Uh, you know, like particular man manasikara and the. Uh, the other other things, you know. Um, okay. Yes, these things take yes. takes time, yeah, and they come step by step. Yeah. The first step is to have mindfulness and meditation to get the mind to jhana first. Then the other thing can come later on. Because my main problem was actually because my my why my mind was wandering. Because the way I look at things, you know, like family matters and the things like that, uh, that's what made me and my mind uh, to wonder. And uh, so after listening to your Dhamma talk and reading the Dhamma book, and then I, I look at the things differently. So it reduced my now mind. I just take it as anicca. Uh, I, I I look at completely different. You know, uh, look yeah. at things completely different. Look at uh, anicca, anicca, uh, anicca, anicca. Yeah. Also, everything is a natural phenomenon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Next, Katrina from Australia. Hi, long time no see. Can I hear you? You have to speak a bit louder. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, better now. Okay. Everyone's asleep. It's late now. Um, what time is it in your place? Midnight or somewhere? Around? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good to be in the meeting. Um, I'm just... um. I've stopped having coffee and I've stopped having sugar and um, it was really hard. It was really painful in the body. And, um, but I felt really, I feel really calm, but sort of um, craving something, <laughs> craving some sort of high. But um. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot better because I think when I was having coffee and, you know, all those things, I was aware that the high was going to end. So yes. and you have to take more coffee <laughs> to go back up again. Yeah. Yeah. But now that I'm not having it, it's sort of, I'm aware of 
I'm aware of it all around me and everyone that's having it. And um, it's so, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. Yes, but once you have overcome your craving, then you feel more free from from being being a slave to your craving. Yeah. Yeah. And it was good to hear what you were saying about analyzing self or no self. But then I was like, how do you resolve that? You know, like, how do you, isn't it just like an endless circle or spiral of sort of questioning or is that what we're supposed to do? About Think what? about that. Analyzing? Analyzing, analyzing if there's a self or if there's an, you know, like analyzing Yes. why I think I'm a, why I think I am a I. Yeah. I I don't know. I think that I do that unconsciously, but I I don't think that I get anywhere. Well, you see, you have to stop your eye from working temporarily first. You see that your eye is just your figment of your own imagination. And you see this when you meditate. When your mind becomes comp completely still, then the, the eye will disappear temporarily. All that is left is just a knowing. And you say the knowing is the real thing. The eye is just the, the delusional thing that created by the mind itself. So you have to get to jhana, the fourth jhana, when the mind becomes still and all the imagination stop. And all, you, all, all that is left is just knowing and emptiness and peace and contentment. Then you will know that the I just come from your own imagination, from your own thinking. You are the you, we are like we are no uh, a novel writer. We write stories about ourselves. We create we create I, we create people and things in our minds. Yeah. But when you meditate, we stop creating this fiction thing. Then we know that all the all things are all fictional, not real. The only real thing are just the six elements. The four physical elements, the four earth, water, fire, and wind element, and the mind, which is the knowing element, and the space element. These are the real thing. And everything else is just figment of our imagination by our by our mind, by our thinking. You think you are, therefore you are, right? When you stop thinking you are, then there's no no you. So you have to get to that stage before you can can see that the, truly there's no 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 self in anything. Everything are just elements. So don't try to use imagination to deal with your imagination. <laughs> You'll be just running around in circle, like trying to uh, catch your, your tail, like a dog, dog trying to bite its tail, you know. Just keep... <laughs> just so, so stop thinking. That's the way to, to see the truth, is to stop thinking. Our thinking is the one that is blocking us to see the truth, the real, the real thing, which is the, the knowing. That's all I can say. So don't try to analyze now about the self. Try to stop stop analyzing first to see when what happens when there's no thinking. When you when there's no thinking, all that is left is just knowing, which is the property of the knowing element. Besides thinking and feeling and remembering, these are also the properties of the, the knowing element on the mind. But when you, med you, you meditate, you stop all these properties from, from functioning. And so all that is left is just the knowing element, the knowing itself.
this this the knowing never ceases. It, it just continue on and on, never rise or cease. But other thing rise and cease. Your thinking rise and cease. Your feel your feeling rise and cease. Your your memory rise and cease. Your connection with the body come and go, rise and cease. So you have to meditate to be to be able to see the truth. To see the raw truth, yeah, and and uh, and and unimagined truth, yeah. the truth without having any any imagination. Okay, then after you have seen this, then when you when you return back to the 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 world of fiction, you have to keep reminding yourself that. You know, you are just a fiction character. <laughs> Your body is just a part of, of the fiction that you created. And everything will eventually end up, you know, gone, disappear. The body will, will one day disappear. And all the possession and all the people that you know will no longer will come into your, <clears throat> your awareness. Your mind move on to the next world, to the next birth, if you still have craving. But if you can stop cravings, then your mind will not go on. <clears throat> Is that okay? That sounds all right to you? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So try to... And at this stage, as a beginning stage, we should try to stop thinking first, so that we can get to know the the knowing itself, and know and and to see that the self comes from our 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 thinking or our imagination, not real. Just we are the mind is like a fiction writer; it writes about itself. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have you pl any plan of coming over again? I would love to come, but I, I don't, I don't really want to fly anymore. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't. How's your son? Okay. He's good. I see. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Has he graduated yet, or is he still studying? Yeah, he's graduated. He's nearly twenty. He okay. was in Thailand, actually. He was in Thailand doing Muay Thai, and I I wanted him to go see you, but he was only there for a little. He was only there for a short time, and he wanted to do Muay Thai. So, yeah. Okay. Good. But he's good. Thanks. Thanks for asking about him. All right. Okay. 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 Nice talking to you. You too. All right. See you later. Okay. Samanji okay. from Sri Lanka. Hello, Tanajan. How are you? Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any question tonight? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Tanajan, uh, uh, just a little while ago, you said that mind is like a fiction writer. Uh, could you just explain? To me a little bit as to why you said so. Just a little bit on what you said. We can write about anything. We're a fiction writer. We can create any characters that we want to create. So we create a self and then use this self as the, the main character of, of this story. See? Okay. Okay, Tanajan. Uh, you also mentioned that uh, uh, it's emptiness that leads to happiness. Uh, so I think, is it correct to say that true happiness comes from within rather than from external sources? That's I right. Think is, that's, that's what right. you meant? Yes. You have to go inside the mind. You have to steal the mind in order to go inside. And you have to, do it. in order to steal your mind, you have to stop your cravings. Yeah. But ironically, many people believe that happiness is something found in the outside world. That's but, right. Yeah. 
But then so, they all turn out to, to be suffering sooner or later, right? Okay. So in according in Buddhism, uh, is happiness understood as living in the present moment? Or? Well, happiness is whenever there's no cravings. Whenever okay, you have cravings, then there's, there's dukkha. So okay. when you can stop craving, then happiness will appear. I know, for example, Tanajan, for a student, like he, he or she has a craving to have a better education. So is it bad in Buddhism? Is it a craving? Yes, but in the real world, you have to, you have to, you have need some tools to, to deal with your, your living. So some craving are considered to be okay because it, it, you need it to, in order to survive in, the, in this world, for instance. Okay, but it's so. still it's still cravings. You don't have to go to school if you can become a monk, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yes. If you can stop your craving, then it's better than to go to school. Because ah. going to school is to to use your education to 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 serve your cravings and to to support your cravings. Because you want to have a good house, you want to have a a big house, you want to have a big car, and you have to want so many things. It, these are all cravings. But if you can cut all these cravings out, you, you don't want anything, you want to be a homeless person, then you don't need to go off to school. You don't need any education. We live like a beggar. The Buddha and all the monks, they live like beggars. So it's best to become a monk or not? But it's hard to be to 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 be a, a virtuous beggar. You have to you have to keep the precept and everything. Okay. And not beg. You have to look for things just yourself. But live like a beggar. But you don't beg. You don't go and disturb other people. Bother other people by asking for help for this or for that. You try to live by, get by with whatever you can find on the street or on the garbage heap, for instance. Okay, Tanajan, thank you. Is it, uh, my next question is, is it enough to follow the five precepts? Uh, I mean, to get a better rebirth? This question is from a friend of mine, actually. Is it enough to follow only the five precepts to get a better rebirth? Yes, if, if you can keep the five precepts, then you will not be 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 born as animals, for instance, or being born as hungry ghosts, or be in hell. You will, we, the precept will pre prevent you from going to to those places. And we should not even tell a small lie. You know, sometimes it's very hard to abstain from. I mean, telling what he told me was like. Uh, he can follow the other four precepts, but not this one where he has to abstain from telling lies because sometimes uh, um, he said he has to tell a lie or two when he asked me, so he's worried about that. That's why he asked that question from about the five precepts. Well, if you break the precept, you break the precept. What can you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, my next question is, uh, Tanajan, the Buddha rejected the caste system. Uh, so is it uh, appropriate for Buddhist monks to segregate into different groups, I mean different Nikayas based on caste? No, the, the different Nikaya come based on the, the, the practice by different Nikaya. Yeah. Uh, no. no, in countries like Sri Lanka, I think... Uh, Buddhist monks, uh, they are, I don't think they call it Nikayas, but they are based on their caste sometimes. No, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't be. Because they shouldn't be. The, because yeah. Buddha rejected the caste system. Yes, but sometimes the monks can be practicing with different interpretation of the precepts of the monastic okay. rules. And they could not practice together. They had to practice separately. So Nikayas are not based on caste? No, based on the difference of difference. On, on the observance of the monastic rules. Okay, Tanajan. Yeah. Uh, and Tanajan, many people suffer from depression more than ever before. 
how can Buddhist meditation and the Buddhist way of life help people overcome depression? Well, depression is caused by your cravings. See? When you crave for something and you cannot get what you want, you become sad, you become depressed. You know? So when you when you meditate, you can stop your cravings. You you'll find out that you don't have to have anything to eat in order to be happy. So then you don't you stop craving for things. When you stop craving for things, then you you won't get any sadness or disappointment if you don't get them. Then you don't become depressed. And when a person is over depressed, Tanajan, he is not in a position to think, so he may need counseling. So how can we help such a person to overcome his status? I mean depression. Take them to live in the monastery, or go join some uh, some what you call meditation classes. You know, okay. retreat, go into meditation retreat. Going, I have ten day retreat for instance. Where people go to. Practice mindfulness and meditation. And then, John, when doing breath meditation, what I generally do is I observe my inhale breath. Is it okay to observe both inhale and exhale breath? Yes, you you observe both because you inhale, yeah. then you then you exhale. Yeah. Okay. And this is again from a friend of mine. This particular question. When doing breath meditation, he asked, is it okay to exhale through mouth? We usually, we are advised to inhale and exhale, to do both inhale and exhale through uh, nose, but he asked whether it's okay to exhale through mouth. Well, how do you normally breathe? <laughs> no, no, I mean to exhale, I mean. I know, how do you normally exhale? Through your mouth or through your nose? I do it through my nose. Okay, then you watch it. Then, no, this is uh, this is uh, this second part of the question is from a friend of mine, Tanajan. I know, but yeah. I, I'm asking him what, what, how does he normally that breathe? I have to ask him, yeah. Okay, okay, just just watch how the 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 the, the body breathes. That's all. If it's breathing through the mouth, okay, no, okay. just watching at the mouth, it's watching it through the nose, okay. just watching the nose. The point uh -huh. is just to, to use breathing as a as an anchor up to the for the mind, not to go thinking about other things. That's, okay. that's, that's okay. the purpose. Okay. Uh, uh, and Tanajan, can a person who reads Dhamma books and listens to Dhamma discussions but does not do any meditation, can such a person enter the path of attain even Sotapanna level? Well, if you can suppress or get rid of your defilement, then you can. But the problem is if okay. you don't meditate, you, you won't have the strength to suppress your or eliminate your defilement. Unless you have already mm -hmm. established meditation in your past life. Previous past life. Okay, that's If you have equanimity and yeah. when you're told that you're supposed to, to start your defilement and you can do it, then you can become enlightened. You can enter into the path right away. Okay, like when the Buddha, when the Buddha first gave his first discourse to the five ascetics, he didn't teach them how to to meditate because he know they all have they are they already have equanimity. So he just tell them to stop their cravings. And when they stop their cravings, they can become enlightened. If you can stop your defilement, then you can come be enlightened. You can become enlightened. Okay. Okay, the, this uh, this question is the next question is from a friend of mine who is doing a postgraduate in economics at a foreign university. He asked, in what ways can Buddhist mindfulness practices influence leadership and decision making in the context of sustainable development? In short, how can we make use of Buddhist mindfulness uh, uh, to uh, for sustainable development practices? Well, when you meditate, your mind becomes calm and it becomes more rational than, rather than emotional. So when you make decision based on rationality, it will be more correct than based your decision on your emotion. Do I have time to ask yes, two more? Yes. Two more yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, should we always contribute to monks who request money for building or renovating temples? Should well, we... first of all, monks are not supposed to, to beg for money or for support. 
unless they have so been too. unless they've been offered the 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 the, the offer pre beforehand, then they can ask the person who offer. Mm -hmm. If, for instance, if you tell me that if I need some ropes, you can I can ask from you, then I can ask. But if you didn't say anything, I cannot go to you right now and say, can you buy me some ropes? Okay, thanks. Uh, and Tanajan, sometimes it's difficult for us to control cravings, especially when we, uh, like when it comes to me, especially when I see sweets, after lunch, I often feel like eating a piece of chocolate or an ice cream, and I have to, I have to stop me. I have to make effort to stop myself from doing that. What is the Buddhist way to control such cravings by training the mind? You can do it step by step, gradually. See? You don't have to do it all suddenly. You can say reduce your your intake of what you you like. To, to have to have it or something like that. Just slowly try to adjust your, your mind, your body toward this reduction. Okay. Do we have to think that it doesn't eating sweets won't do us any good? Or, well, medical or... medical information said that it's not good for yeah. you. Right? So we have I mean so do we have to think about that when uh, uh, when trying to control our craving for sweets, that can help. But the the main goal is to to con to to see the the harm in your craving, not not in what you what you take. But what you take also can be harmful to your body, but it, but it's not harmful to your mind. See, what is harmful to your mind is your 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 cravings. Okay, Tanaj. Yeah, right. that's all for today, Tanaj. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Wish right. you good health. Yeah, happy to right. hear from yeah. you. Yeah. From you, I hope yes. your question can can help people to make understand better of the Buddha's yeah. teaching. Okay. Nice talking. See you again. Yeah. Sure. Next, B Ravin from Bangkok. Hi. Good evening, Prashan. Yes, good evening to you. What can I do for you? So Prajan, I did some reflection over the past few weeks. I found that if I developed some mindfulness before I meditated, I found I meditated better. So I was just reflecting on what you mentioned earlier in, in this call that uh, developing strong mindfulness will facilitate for um, better meditation. So that is something I'm working on to improve my mindfulness. And you have to do this all day long. Yeah. As soon as you get up, start mindfulness with your day. Start the day with mindfulness. Because you don't have to think when you're alone, right? When you have to get ready to go to work, you have to shower, you have to get dressed, you have to get ready. During this time, you can practice mindfulness along with what you do. Yes. When I'm alone. Yes. And you don't have to think about anything really. You don't have to think about what you do because that what you do is almost automatic. Taking a shower, brushing your teeth, it's all automatic. You don't have to use your, your thought to, to think what how am I gonna brush my teeth? How am I gonna take a shower? So don't let your mind think about anything. Keep it with butto, butto. If if you cannot stop it from thinking, then keep reciting good to. Uh, if you can stop it from thinking, just focus on what you do. The goal is to stop thinking. Then if you can do this beforehand when you meditate, you find it easy to, to, to calm the mind quickly and easily. Mindfulness is a very important key to meditation practice. No, no. It's one of the noble eightfold path, right? Right, yes. mindfulness. right mindfulness. And then, and then after it becomes right, 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 right concentration. Right, right concent. The fourth jhana is the right concentration. Oh, I see, Parajan. I'll I'll work on that. And I do have another question, if if I may. Sure, go ahead. Um, 
Pradhan, you mentioned the importance of um, understanding the three characteristics of existence, which is um, Anichang, Tukang, and Anatta. But um, how is it that wisdom or attainment of you know noble area is permanent? Why is it permanent? Is it because because it, it dispels the delusions and the ignorance of the of the three characteristics of existence. The three characteristics of existence is the, is the truth, and but we don't see them as, as such. We see the body as permanent. We see the body as a self. But in truth, the body is impermanent. There is no self in the body. So once you see that there is no self in the body, you cannot go back and say, there is a self anymore. Once you see the truth, then the truth will overcome the delusion. Just like before, in ancient time, people believed the, the world is flat, right? But now they have proven that the world is round. So nobody believes that the world is flat anymore. So once you see the truth, then the falsehood will, will not come back and haunt you or deceive you anymore. So when you truly see that the body is impermanent, and it's going to get all okay, sick and die, and you see it, and there's no other way about it. You just have to accept it. See? And when you can accept it, then there will be no suffering. Our suffering comes from our denial of the truth. We don't want the body to get old. We don't want the body to get sick. We don't want the body to die. And this is the cause of suffering. This is that craving. See? But when we see the truth and we know that there's no other way, you cannot stop the, the body from getting old, getting sick or die. Then you just have to comply with the truth. <laughs> when you comply, then there's no suffering because there's no cravings. No desire for not to get old, get sick, or die. So the three characteristics of existence is the, the truth that you have to somehow teach your mind to see. And the mind doesn't want to see. And the mind keeps denying the truth. The mind wants the body to last forever. That, that the mind doesn't want the body to get sick. It doesn't want the body to get old. That's when suffering comes. When you cannot get what you want, then you get suffering, right? Yes. So so wisdom will dispel this this illusion. That's right, illusion. And to get wisdom we need concentration and to get concentration we need mindfulness yes you need concentration to to, to give the, the mind the strength to stop the cravings when when the wisdom tells the mind that it is the craving that, that that is causing the suffering in the mind the cravings for things that is not true okay yes Prajan, very clear. All right. Thank you very much. Next, Viona Charlotte from Indonesia. Long time no see you. Where have you been? Can you speak louder? Yes, I want to ask. Uh, louder. Yes, I want to ask Ajahn. In the Patija Samuvada, it is explained that after the Vedana, there will be the potential opportunity for tanha to arise. Now, how do we can condition the vedana properly so that tanha will not arise? What should be contemplated or conditioned in our mind? You contemplate on the three characteristics of, of existence, anicca, dukkha, anatta, on the things that you that you pray for, see. Mm -hmm. If you see the things that you pray for will cause you suffering, then you 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 don't want to pray for that thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Like eating too much sugar, for instance, 
will cause you to have diabetes, right? Mm. But people, if they, they don't have this knowledge, they'll, they'll keep enjoying eating sweets, eating stuff, sweet stuff until they, they become diabetic eventually. This is because they don't have the knowledge that eating too much sweet can cause diabetes. Same way, we get dukkha we have, because our, we crave for things that can cause us dukkha. Things that can cause us dukkha because they are impermanent, they are temporary. We can be happy when, when, when we get something that we like, but when we, lose, when we lose something that we like, then we become sad or, or unhappy. So if we, if we don't want to be sad or unhappy, then we don't go after things that can make us sad or unhappy. Things that are impermanent. So you have to see everything that you pray for as being anicca nukha anatta. Then you will have no craving. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, and in order to be able to, to see it clearly and all the time, you need to practice meditation first, to calm your mind first. Because if you, your mind is not calm, your craving will be strong, too strong for you to resist. And you will not be able to, to teach the mind to go see the truth, because the mind keeps seeing delusional, because the mind is still delusional when it's not calm. Okay. Thank you, Ajahn. Next, Dr. PL and Dr. Indira, both together tonight, today. Yes. Good morning from Toronto, Tana Jan. How are you? Good, thank you. Uh, yes, I have a question, Tana Jan. I was just thinking now, Devadatta and Buddha, when you take in many lives, Devadatta was following Buddha, he was always angry and he had a lot of um, bad intentions, things like that. But every life of Buddha, like he, uh, he was very kind and he let go and he forgave him. But so many lives, until he became Buddha, he followed him. So in the same way, like even, you know, in like uh, if somebody is really like, you know, being unkind and bad, and you still learn to forgive. Is, there, is it possible even if you let go from your side, that person can, you know, even in a later birth, again, have that kind of conflicts? Is that possible? I hope you're not talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, in, in, in practicing loving kindness or forgiveness, we do it for our our ourselves when we forgive exactly. our mind become peaceful and then we don't worry about the other person who whether they want they want to still continue to have hatred toward me, you or not you cannot That's prevent right. that you cannot That's the purpose is to to calm yourself to make yourself yeah. happy, calm and peaceful by not yeah. having hatred That's true. but if the other person still want to continue with their hatred that's the business you cannot force them. Yes, I understand. But one day that person might see the light. Like Devadatta eventually finally mm -hmm. in his last days finally see the light of, of having hatred. So yes. he has forgiveness from the Buddha before he died. Mm -hmm. Yes. True. Thank you, Tana Chan. Yeah. But the Buddha never have have any hatred toward Devadatta. So no. the Buddha always no. feels peaceful and happy. Yes. Regardless of what Devadatta might do to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do it, isn't it? If you, if you, if you don't have equanimity, you cannot do it. You need to have equanimity. That's right, Tana Jan. Yes. Thank you so much. This weekend we went to um Satisaraniya, the Bikuni monastery, and yes. also to um Tisarana. It's about Two and a half hours drive from three and a half, three and a half sorry and uh, yes so both monasteries it was a very nice experience yeah. are they nearby that's it. it no three and a half hours from toronto it's like it's in perth ontario 
I mean, I like both, are, both, uh, both places so are, are they nearby? Both places to to yes, each other? Yes, half an hour. Yeah, both uh between uh on them two monasteries. Yes, half an hour. I see. Are they outside in the country? In the countryside. Yes. Close by. Yeah. Yes. That's good. It's quiet then. Yes, very much so. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Very peaceful. Maybe you'll find yeah, peace. you maybe you like make up residence. Like one day. Maybe one day you'll make up residence there. Yes. Have, a, have you ever thought yes. of that? Close to Perth, yes. I was I thinking know. about it. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see Tata John. Till then we do our best from home. Yeah, I, I ask her. Um, well, I have my mother. She's not <laughs> see. So we'll see as things go. But at the moment, you know, doing following Dharma as much as yeah. possible. And, you know, uh, I think there's a lot still as a lay person we can yes. uh, uh, work on. I think that yeah. we do morality, uh, you know, and then Bhavana. Maybe so. the final leap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just chasing, really. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It's up to you. No, 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 it's true. That's a good, very valid question. Yes. <laughs> you do think about it sometimes. Yes. It's a very valid question. Thank you, Tana Jan. Yeah. But thank you so much. Even we told the Ajans and Bikunis how much it has helped us yeah, yeah. joining these Zoom yeah. sessions. We're talking to Ajan Viradam who had a chat. So we're talking about how we uh, engage in the Zoom sessions. And we learned so much from you. <laughs> Okay, I'm really happy to do that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any, anything, Dr. Pia? Uh, just a, uh, might be a long answer, but I, the Asava or Asava, I'm sorry, oh, your, your connection is not good. And I can have you. Being uh, getting you know, the R server. Can you hear me now? Can't hear, but off and on. You cannot get the, the, the meaning yeah. of what you said. The, the, the defilements of the last, uh, the defilements to go for an arahat is the, the R servers. The underlying defilements of the mind, uh, which are like uh, submerged, but they bubble up. Uh, in most people and the arahats is called the complete eradication of the asavas. Asava is di different translation for it. Some uh, translate as uh, fermentations. Uh, some translate as taints. Uh, so these are all like the underlying uh, defilements uh, of the mind, which I, I, I guess at one point we put them in uh, say if you think mind as a box uh it's not a box but if you think imagine so unless you put them in it won't uh, react and come out like a chemicals like a toxic chemicals you put in and the toxic chemicals react inside the mind and they come out bubbling up what do you think of this asava how do you how do you um how do you um uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, the, the underlying defilements of the they, are the, they are the ten sites of yojanas. Hmm. The, the ten fetters. That's what they are. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 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 So they, they bind us to samsara. That's right. Yeah. Then they can be very subtle, very almost unnoticeable. And it's yes. hard to see. Yes. So they call us a one. But yeah. but there there are some there are some yojanas mm. of of fetters the ten fetters the ten fetters so at certain levels certain amount of fetters go away till arahat yes all ten yeah. are gone yes the ten fetters are divided into different categories of categories of a level yeah. of enlightenment yeah. mm. yes. To achieve the first level, you need to get rid of the first, first the three, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yes. Yeah. So they are they are, are fetters, but sometimes they are described as asava. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When, when more specifically, they refer to the, the, the 10 septums. Yeah. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. just uh, general terms, general yeah. word. Okay. Mm. That's a sun here, Jinatam. Right? Thank you. Thank you so much, Sana Jan. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, they're on Saturday. Next, Melinda from Singapore. Good evening, Sarah. Can, can you speak louder, please? Can you hear me better? Yes. Good evening, Sarah. A lot of kids, sir. Uh huh. Which is your show? Yes, and we really did do that. It's not a couple. That's a practice more. Mm. Your practice will remove your defilement, your delays. Mm. If you don't practice, your delays will not be removed. Mm. We'll keep practicing. Charity, morality, and meditation. <clears throat> okay. Mm. I think the first session, uh, we were speaking with uh, the first participant. Uh, I think his name is Marcus. And Ajahn said that um, sometimes you cannot be too perfect. <laughs> and I, I still feel that I have not enough uh, I, I, it's difficult to find a balance. Huh? Like how, how far do I push? I no need to find a balance. Just accept things as they come. If you fail, just accept you, that you fail. That's all. If you succeed, you just accept that you succeed. There's no need to find balance. Ah. So just okay. let the moment be one after another. That's like, right. Yes. Okay. Today you do this thing and you succeed. Tomorrow you do something else and you fail. Okay, so you you just accept them for what they are, and move on, or use them as a lesson. If you fail, find out the reason why did you fail, so you can improve your 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 performance, so that you won't fail the next time. Failure actually is good. It's a teacher. See, we need a teacher sometimes to teach us what's wrong with us. What what did we do wrong? So you can you can analyze your failure and find out what did I do wrong that caused this failure. And it, it can be a teacher. It can be a good teacher, really. So you should not be afraid of failure. Think of it as a teacher. You have to be wrong before you you can become correct. I'm sorry, if I'm too lenient. Like... No one is perfect. Just say this word, no one is perfect. Even the Buddha, he, he did some wrong thing before he became enlightened. He fasted for 49 days and he found that that was wrong. And then he accepted the milk from, from, from the lay person. Yes, and, 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 and start eating. And then this causes appointment on his the five ascetics, so they, they abandoned him. But he didn't care. He didn't he didn't practice for for somebody to to re respect him. He practiced for the eradication of suffering. So whichever method that doesn't can eradicate the suffering, he stopped and find a new solution. So he eventually found the Four Noble Truths. So you have to be wrong before you can be right. So don't be afraid of being wrong. But, like that. You, but you have to admit that when you're wrong, you're wrong, that's all. Don't try to not admit that. Some people don't want to admit that they're wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. When you're wrong, admit that you're wrong. Then try to correct it the next time. Yeah. Okay. Like uh, I, I feel um, like sometimes I feel this mood like very sad, and then I crave for a food that is sour. So, I sometimes I feel like I, I, I just can't bear that mood. 
and then I, I just delete it, and then I go and have the, the sourish food. Um, yeah, so I don't know, I just feel up, but I know it's like a happy. Uh, I'm not sure, like, it's something inside the, the brain that, that I just want to have that feel up the balance, like feeling sad and anything that sour food to, to counter that sadness. But if I don't eat, I try to push myself. I find that I can't focus. I, I'm not going anywhere. So, so. When you're sad, you're using the wrong remedy. The food doesn't rem remedy your, your sadness. It's your mindfulness that can do this. Yeah. It's like a, the mind just like, like I seem to be that it's lenient. And I try it the next day like that. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can endure not to have it. And then I, I get over it. And sometimes I just, just succumb to the craving. Yeah, that's because your mindfulness is weak when you succumb to your defilement. Mm -hmm. So you have to be strong with your mindfulness. Keep practicing more mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, all, and also wisdom to see that what you, what sensual pleasure are not the answer to your, to the, yes. to the cessation of suffering. They are mm -hmm. actually it will increase more, more suffering later on. Because you become I mean, more addicted, you become more attached to them. Yeah. I think he told Julia about when we suffer, but you, something that we know is not correct, but you still want to cling on it. <laughs> yeah, stubborn, and then the defilement are very stubborn. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you, Ajahn. You're welcome. Christine Koe from Penang. Good evening, Tanajan. Yes. Uh, this Saturday, I'm flying to Thailand for nine days to do uh, the donation before the uh, Vasa end. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, total about 10 temples. Good. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's all for tonight. Thank you so much. I hope yeah. that next, uh, next year I can visit Tanajan as well. <laughs> Okay, you, you, you're visiting me right now. <laughs> I can oh. offer Ghana and Marriage. <laughs> you, can, you can send it by the mail. Transfer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Practice is much more important. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay, let's Thank practice. You uh, you're yeah. welcome. Next, Marsha from Ohio. What's the Hello? town you're living in? What's the name of the town you're living in? Um, I live just outside of Dayton, Dayton. Ohio. Ohio. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was very interested in the talk you had with Julia on emptiness, and I was, I was actually just watching the Facebook live, and I was happy to get into the Zoom meeting. I thought it would be full already, but um. You know, I sort of ended up in this empty state in my meditation again. I, My meditation hasn't been great, but I've been, you know, really aware of how my mind is working and how distracted I've been due to things I really can't change. So I just keep trying to accept everything as it's coming and uh, so on Sunday morning, I sat down with the local meditation Zoom and I thought, okay, got to get back on track, have to, you know, really get the focus back. And I was able to get some concentration and I was watching the nose tip and so it became very steady and and then i realized oh i'm in the empty state again you know there's nothing there really and and then i just knew it's not like a thinking type of a thing but then i knew that 
the emptiness was passing away. I knew that I wasn't clinging to anything and that the emptiness was this, um, I wrote it down here. I knew that the emptiness was a steady state of disappearing. And so I've been thinking about that because I've always wanted to see the rising and the passing away. And I thought, well, now I seem to be experiencing the passing away. It's like there's nothing there. It's, and it's not like I'm really seeing anything. It was more like I was knowing it. And so I think there's, I still have a little confusion about what was going on and and I realized it was the emptiness was what what the books say is being insubstantial it's like there just nothing I couldn't see anything forming but I knew that because it was empty that it's like everything was gone before it could be there does that does that make any sense well, if it's, if it's true emptiness, then there's nothing. <laughs> but if there's still something, then it's not true emptiness yet. So you might yeah, there was, just, there was... it's not yet fully still. Let's, let's put it that way, maybe. When it becomes fully still, then everything will disappear. And mm. all you have left is, is nothing or emptiness. And the knowing of that emptiness, that, that is the, the knowing. But everything right. else that that's been in your mind will disappear temporarily, and then mm -hmm. you find you find a sense of peace and contentment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing that you should experience: is contentment, my or equanimity. No love, hate, fear, delusion. No love for anything, not hate for anything, fear of anything, or deluded of, of anything. Mm -hmm. Just being happy within itself, the mind being happy within itself, doesn't need to have anything anymore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's the feeling you want to get to. If, if, if I can use the word feeling, but it's not feeling. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I'm, I keep nearly getting there. I You're feel, nearly there, nearly there. I'm right up at the edge. I, I keep yeah. coming right, right up to the edge. Just keep focusing on your breath. Don't, don't pay attention to anything else. <laughs> I need to hear that over and over. Thank you for yes. telling me again. <laughs> yeah. We tend to be distracted by whatever we think or we feel sometimes, or what we see. Mm -hmm. Come back to your breath. Mm -hmm. come, come back to your concentration. Because it's the concentration that will lead you to emptiness. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it sort of seems like I get to that little equanimity and then mm -hmm. I allow a little bit of analyzation. Yeah, I get a little distracted when I get yeah. to the equanimity. Yeah. But you can remind yourself the next time when you meditate because you know that what 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 you're not supposed to, to be distracted with anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and I find that when these things happen, it's easier for me to correct it. It's like I can do that and then go back into the go back to the nose. Yes, and, and the more you practice, the more experience you will have, and the more you you will know how to deal with the things that that keep distracting you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Just continue on practicing. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Next in ten from Indonesia. Good evening, Prajan. Yes. How are you? Um, I'm fine, Prajan. How are you, Prajan? Good. Thank you. What can I do for you? Yes, 
uh, Tara Chan, uh, what should uh, be offering when the caffeine? Catina? Yes. Yes. Just the same thing, like you offer anything, uh, any, just the four basic requisites of mouse, you know, like clothing, food, uh -huh. uh, okay. medicine, uh -huh. and, uh -huh. or whatever the, the temple needs. If the temple needs to renovate or to rebuild something, if you want to share, you want to help support, then you can help. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, more better we ask the, the temple? Yeah, it's better if you can ask them, what do you need? Uh, mm. Because sometimes you give them things that we don't need and it's, done, mm -hmm. it's not useful. Mm. But we cannot ask you for that. So you have to mm -hmm. ask us, then we can tell you. But I cannot go mm. to you and say, I need this and I need that. I cannot do that. You have to be the one mm. to ask me, what do I need? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Then you make the offer. So. Mm, okay, Prajan. So when I do Prajan, I ask to Prajan. Then it's up to me whether I'll take the offer or not also. <laughs> you can offer me, but sometimes I can refuse the offer also. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second question, Prajan. Uh, as a Buddhist, what should we do if some uh, someone passed away? Don't cry. Just, uh -huh. just, just yeah, remain. Like uh -huh. yeah, just, just remain normal. Act normal. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Death is the, mm -hmm. Buddha, the Buddha said. Death is normal. Don't mm -hmm. act. Don't act as if it's something mm -hmm. abnormal. Uh -huh. So we need to uh, a chanting or do uh, something no, ritual. No. You, you uh, need to tell, sometimes I, I, I don't understand. You need to remind yourself that you also will die one day. Oh, okay. That's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. I am also subjected mm -hmm. to death. And one day will be my cue. My turn. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do, really. Yes. Okay. We tend to forget death. Eh? Okay. Only when we see somebody die, then we, then we can start thinking, oh, I'll be dead also one day. Mm. Then you have to keep thinking more, not just on the day a mm -hmm. person die. You have to remind yourself mm -hmm. every day, or every hour, mm -hmm. or every minute if you can. Mm -hmm. Can you remember that? And you will, gonna, you will die. Have you ever thought yeah. of it today about dying? No. Okay, then that's bad. You have to keep thinking all the time. The Buddha said, if you can think about death every in every every breath, that's that's the best thing. He said, when you breathe in and, and you don't breathe out, you die. When you breathe out and you, when you don't breathe in, you die. Just keep thinking like this uh -huh. all the time. Uh huh. Uh, Prajan, but but uh, for me, cause my delusion, I I worry if I think uh, about the every day, so I will will uh I don't want to walk any anymore. But you have to eat, right? Do you have to eat or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, then you have to work. <laughs> who's, who's who's gonna feed you? If you're not you're feeding yourself. Okay. Whenever you feel lazy, you 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 ask yourself, can you stop eating or not? If you can stop eating, then you can be lazy. You don't have to work. Oh uh, no, I mean when I contemplate uh about that every day, every moment. So I think I know need everything so more better. I, I just meditate. That is, uh, I scared about that. Okay, you have to meditate first. Your mind is not strong enough yet to accept death. You need to have mm. equanimity before you can accept death. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. I'll go okay. to the next one. To, 
to Rome from the Philippines. Hi, Rome. Is this your real name, Rome? Yes, I love you. I'm, I'm Rome. You cannot hear you. You have to speak louder. Uh, Rome for Rome V. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I don't have questions. I'm just listening on Chinese. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'll go to Singapore then, to Sulan. Hi, Su. Hello, Ajahn. Happy to see you again. Yes, happy to see you too. What can I do for you? Yeah. Um, actually, last week I was uh, overseas, so I couldn't dial in for the call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Ajahn, like, um, kind, I kind of feel like, um, you know, when I have to be accountable to people, it feels uh, easier to deliver, whereas as compared to if I have to be accountable to myself. So I just wanted to ask, like, you know, how can I uh, be more accountable to myself? Yeah. Just by thinking that you're not yourself, see, you're somebody else that you are feel accountable to. Oh. Okay. Because yeah. you tend to be when you when you with yourself, you tend to be uh, uh, what you call not. I cannot think of the word. But with other people, you know that they are critical to you. But with yourself, you tend not to be critical of yourself. <laughs> so yeah. you have to think of yourself as somebody else. Be critical of yourself. Mm. And then you have to also uh, have to have to give some form of punishment to yourself when you do something wrong. Oh. So that you will then not do it again the next time. Okay. Like if you do something wrong, they say, okay, I'm not going to eat dinner for today or something as a form of punishment, mm -hmm. but also as a form of reward for the mind. When you can skip a meal, it's good for the mind. It's bad for the defilement. <laughs> punish your defilement. Every time you do something wrong, punish your defilement. Oh. I'll stop shopping this week. I'm not. I'm not going to buy anything new this week. Oh. When you do something wrong, mm. oh, then, you, then you feel more accountable towards yourself. Oh. Then does it mean that if I do something wrong, I can buy something to reward myself? <laughs> I I didn't quite hear you. Oh, I said um. So if. If I were to do something right, that does it mean that um it is okay to buy something to reward myself? You should reward with dhamma, not reward with defilement. You should oh. go then you should go practice meditation for three days. Oh yes, yes, okay. So I should also be wise on like how I should uh yeah. reward myself. Uh or if you want to buy something, then use the money to give it to charity instead. Mm. Then you're rewarding your the mind with dhamma, with dana. Mm -hmm. If you go buy things that you don't need, then you're rewarding your your defilement, your greed. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. Okay. Then uh yeah, today I I bought some pastries and shared with my colleague. Yeah, and I feel <laughs> very happy about it. Good. And Good. I, I bought some. Yeah. Yeah. Do it more often. Yeah. Mm. And with everything you want to buy, every time you want to buy something for yourself, buy it for somebody else. Mm. It makes you feel better. Yes, it, it does. And um, I was quite surprised that they also gave me some pastries and snacks in return. Yeah, giving is 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 more happy than 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 taking. Mm. Yes, giving me is more happy. Than Okay, we're running out of time. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ajahn. I'll go to Kunchuk now. Do we have any questions, Kunchuk? Yeah. 
Good. Namaskar. We have one question so far, and it's from the Dr. V channel. And the question is, when meditating, should we listen to pure tone frequencies, such as the 936 hertz or by or binaural beats like theta and delta waves? Or is it better to meditate in a quiet place? I've, I've seen so many videos about this. Uh, you should meditate on a natural environment, something that, that's available naturally. Like go to the forest, go to a park or somewhere quiet. Or if you cannot go, maybe you can sit in your own room and do it there. Yeah. Whatever is available to you. But the goal is to find a quiet place. That's all. Because if you have noises or sound or people doing things around you, they can become distraction to your meditation and you will not be able to succeed in your meditation that way. All right? That is all, Ka. That is okay. all, Ka. Now that's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for your company. I hope this meeting is useful to you and can help you in your practice. In the meantime, please stay safe, stay mindful, and keep on practicing. And if all goes well, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.